Hi, my name is Dr. James Weiner. I'm director of the Weiner Wellness Center. Weiner is spelled with five letters, like wine that people drink, W-I-N-E-R. We're located at 2419 Baldwick Road in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15205. Our phone number is 412-922-WELL or 412-922-9355. That's about five minutes from downtown Pittsburgh. We have a website at drwiner.com. We have a Facebook page at Weiner Wellness Center. Also, another Facebook page, James Weiner. We're on Twitter at Dr. James Weiner. All right, so today we're going to talk about joints. What is a joint? I'm not talking about the thing you smoke with marijuana. <laughs> what, what is a joint? A joint is the intersection of two or more bones. In other words, if we were one bone, we wouldn't be able to move. So we have these articulations so that we can move. You know, in your fingers, uh, you know, here's, here's a joint, here's a joint, here's a joint, okay? So that's how you're able to make a fist because you have these bones that move. Now bones are connected to one another by ligaments. They are moved by muscles. So if you injure a muscle, it's called a, a strain. If you injure a ligament, it's called a strain with a T. I, I mean, if you injure, maybe I got it backwards. A strain is a muscle, bigger part. Strain is a muscle, a sprain is a ligament, okay? So you sprain ligaments with a P, you strain muscles with a T. And a lot of pain actually comes from the muscles. I would say 80% of people's musculoskeletal pain comes from the muscles. And that's why very often when people go to a chiropractor, they get limited results because the chiropractor is just moving the bones but not doing anything about the muscles because there are pain referral patterns. And you can have pain in your hand that's coming from your neck, the tight muscles in your neck. You can have pain across the low back that comes from the front. So a lot of you have been diagnosed with arthritis. Anyone here been told they have arthritis? You may or may not have arthritis and the pain may or may not be coming from that arthritis. So let's say they take an x-ray, they find there's some joint changes, they say that's why you have the pain. Not necessarily, because you may have uh, pain referral from these muscles. For example, like so-called carpal tunnel, very often it's coming from tight muscles up here in the forearm. And, but you feel it in the hands and the fingers. I had a guy that came from Florida, he had pain behind the eye. He had had a stroke, a mini stroke. He recovered from that. And the doctors there didn't want to touch him. Somehow he found out about me because he used to live in Johnstown and some physician in Johnstown told him about me. And he called up and I said, well, find someone who can work on the muscles because that's basically in the upper trapezius, this area here that causes eye pain. Uh, none of the muscle therapists want to work on him because he had had uh, a stroke. So he flew up here and I worked on the upper trapezius area and in one visit we got rid of his eye pain. So his eye pain was actually coming from the trapezius muscle. Now he could have gone to eye doctors, I think he did, and they had no idea why he had the eye pain. It was actually referred from a muscle on his shoulder. Now who would think that? You have to know a lot of these pain referral patterns. Most medical doctors, most chiropractors, most eye doctors, etc., are not trained in these pain referral patterns. And so if you have pain in the hands or the elbows or the knees, the hips, they'll tell you it's arthritis. Now if they take an x-ray and there's no arthritis, then they're really stymied. But if you do have some joint changes, they're going to label it all on the pathology and it may or may not be coming from the joints whatsoever. So I want to make that clear, that a lot of the problems we have as far as pain and dysfunction of our musculoskeletal system actually comes from tight muscles. For example, if you have a frozen shoulder and you can't lift your arm up, what may be happening? Well, the latissimus dorsi muscle that connects your back to your arm, forms your armpit, may be tight and then it's keeping your arm from going up. So you don't need that muscle cut, you need it relaxed. You know, I, I, when I fell and broke my wrist that time, I had limited range of motion in my shoulder because the muscles tighten up as a defensive posture. You know, if someone punches you in the stomach, you go like that. that that's sort of what the muscles do. So this tightness 
just needs to be relaxed, and that's why we did the trigger point muscle therapy here. Now, sometimes you might need certain supplements to relax the muscles, like magnesium or potassium. How many people drink soda pop here? Anyone drink soda pop? Really? She's a patient of mine. I can't believe it. You know, knowledge not lived is sin. If you know something but you don't implement it, you might as well not know it. So, you'll see we've given you a handout. You can look at it later. It's, it's an entire packet on soda pop. Because there's an interrelationship between what you eat, arthritis, and bone loss. How many people here have bone loss or osteoporosis or osteopenia? Let's see a show of hands. Anyone, a uh, few of you have that. Okay, how many people are on bone drugs like Fosamax, Avista, Reclass, Boniva? Any of you on those? None of you on those, that's good. But we have an article we've given you on that. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about this friend of mine in California. I'm gonna tell you two stories about him. Number one, way back in uh, 1982, I injured my knee. And my uh, right knee blew up and looked like a volleyball. And I was having trouble walking on it. There was a lot of pain. I used crutches most of the time. I'd go up and down stairs on my rear end. I'd sit down on the first step and then go up and down the stairs on my rear end because it was just too painful to try to put all that pressure on the one leg. And sometimes when I'd be walking, my knee would give out and I'd fall to the ground. I went to numerous orthopedic doctors. They all said, what you need is your cartilage clipped. How many people have had that operation, uh, either laparoscopically or otherwise, the meniscus, the cartilage, and the knee? Anyone here have that done? You did, okay. Why well, didn't have it done? And what I did was take nutritional supplements. Now, way back in 1982, we didn't have the supplements we have now that I'm going to talk about. And the thing has healed. I mean, I, I can... You know, you can see here, there's, there's no fluid there, see? It's totally fine. It healed itself. Now this is a principle I talk about very often. The body can heal itself. You are not like an inanimate object, like a car. Someone threw a rock on my car last year and dented the fender. Well, I had to go and have the fender replaced. But when I broke my wrist, it healed. I didn't have to have a hand transplant. It healed. Your body can heal itself. Now this is a concept that I think is basically foreign to most medical doctors. They think we're an inanimate object. You have an underactive thyroid, they give you externally produced thyroid. They don't understand, maybe we can get your thyroid to make its own hormone. You see what I mean? You have irritable bowel syndrome. They don't figure out what's causing the constipation or the diarrhea or the pain or the bloating. They start cutting out part of it, or at least give you steroids or Remicade or something to suppress it. We try to figure out the underlying cause. What's irritating the intestines causing this problem? Okay? What is causing the osteoporosis? It's not a Fosamax deficiency. It's not a drug deficiency. Okay? So we go back to my friend in California, Carl. He started having knee problems. And he kept having arthroscopic surgery where they were cutting out a little piece of cartilage here, a little piece of cartilage there, and eventually he had to have a knee replacement. Here I am, and I'm like 10 years older than he is, and my knee's fine. What was the difference? I never had them cut the cartilage. A lot of people get a knee problem and they get swelling. I had a, I, uh, a, a patient in here last week. He said, since my last visit, he said, my knee swelled up. And I went to the doctor, and the doctor drained the fluid. He said, within 15 minutes, I had terrible pain that I didn't have before, and he said, I still have the pain. So the doctor sees this so-called abnormal condition, but doesn't understand why the person has the abnormal condition. They say, well, there's fluid. There shouldn't be fluid. Let's drain it out. They don't understand. The body put the fluid there for a reason, to cushion the injured part so the injured part wouldn't get damaged. And also, that fluid contains nutrients that'll help rebuild the cartilage. So when I had that fluid in my knee and was blown up like this, I did not have the fluid taken out. This man that was here last week 
get the fluid taken out, and for several weeks he's been having problems. Okay? When you have a fever, the fever is good. The body's trying to kill off bacteria, viruses, maybe even cancer. A fever is good. A fever is not bad. So you have to understand why the body's doing something. It's like if you get a scab after you cut yourself, you don't peel the scab off. Yeah, it's not usual to have a scab, but in this consequence, it is the right thing. Your body is doing the right thing. You have to realize the body's always doing the right thing. The medical doctors think the body's always doing the wrong thing, and we have to stop the symptoms without understanding what the body's trying to do. You may be told you have an autoimmune disease, and we have to suppress the immune system. No, we have to figure out what's stimulating the immune response. Maybe you have food allergies. Okay, so I get it. So Carl kept having his knee drained and cartilage cut, and then he got a knee replacement. I haven't consumed soda pop in over 40 years, maybe 45 years. Carl, last year, was reaching for something overhead in his kitchen, and his thigh bone broke. Broke in half, and he fell to the floor, and his wife had to take him to the hospital, and he had to have an operation. How could someone who's like 58 years old have his thigh spontaneous break without any trauma? Now what happened to me this year, I was in Florida at a friend's swimming pool. And there were a group of us there, we were horsing around pushing each other in a swimming pool and twice I got pushed in the shallow end and they had steps going, uh, cement steps, real wide cement steps going into the shallow end and I hit the edge of those cement steps. There, there was, the top step was only maybe six inches below the water line. One time smashed my one thigh, one time smashed the other thigh, and then later in the day I was walking around the pool and I slipped and fell in and it hit my one thigh again. Three times in one day I had trauma and I'm 67 and a half. And nothing happened, I didn't break anything. Carl standing up broke his bone. He drinks 10 to 12 cans of soda pop a day. Okay, that's the difference why his bones are breaking and mine, when I'm thrown against cement, nothing happened. Okay? How many people here drink soda pop? Let's say uh, we got you. You. Okay. We have a picture right over there. Uh, you see, right to the entrance of the store, to the right, we have pictures. There's a picture there of teeth that was provided by my dentist, Dr. Warren. 17-year-old young man whose teeth are rotting because the acid from the soda pop is rotting his teeth. And it will rot your bones because your body has to neutralize all that acid by taking the minerals out of your muscles, out of your teeth, and out of your bones. So if you want to cause osteoporosis, you eat an acid-forming diet and consume acid beverages like soda pop. Okay. Also, this damages your joints and you can get arthritis. I've had a lot of patients over the years, they cut out the soda pop, suddenly they don't have the joint pain. So what you eat has a lot to do with your health. And this is something medical doctors again don't know because they don't study nutrition. Jamie Dorley, who you know is normally here but he has a business meeting helping people and he, uh, he may be speaking today, I know he's speaking almost every day. He went to a medical school in eastern Pennsylvania a few months ago, and he asked them, how much nutrition do the medical students have? They get no nutrition training whatsoever, none. So if it's so irrelevant to your health, I would say let's all stop eating. I mean, this is something that's irrelevant, right? Obviously, it's very relevant. If you don't eat, you're gonna die because your body is constantly replacing itself. So let's talk about this osteoporosis. You have two types of bone cells. You have the osteoblast with a B, and you might think that stands for building. And you have osteoclast with a C, and that breaks down the old bone. So in other words, what's happening is you're constantly replacing all the cells in your body. Just like the hair grows, and the hair you have now is not the hair strand you had 10 years ago, the bones you have are not the bones you had four to seven years ago. Every day, 24-7, you are getting rid of old bone and building new bone. Now, if you have a net loss where the building is less than the getting rid of the old bone, then you get thinning of the bone, you get what's called osteoporosis. What do the doctors do? 
They give you drugs that stop the breakdown of the old bone. That's why we've given you that article on these bone drugs. These bone drugs do not build bone. The Forteo, the, uh, the, the uh, Fosamax, the Vista, the Boniva, the Reclass, they don't build bone. They stop the breakdown of old bone. So what happens eventually, all you have is old bone. And old bone is brittle. And that's what happened to my friend uh, Carl. I don't know if he was on a bone drug. I think he told me he was, but uh, he was drinking all the soda pop. So his bones got brittle and they started breaking spontaneously. I, on the other hand, take no medications. I eat a healthy diet. I don't drink soda pop. I've been a vegetarian for over 44 years, which means I don't have an acidic diet. Those of you who eat a lot of dead animals, you're very acidic, very high in phosphorus. Those of you that drink milk or use dairy products, Dairy products actually cause bone loss. Go on the internet, you'll find this out. Then what's happening is you don't have the proper nutrition and your bones start to decay. You do not want to take these bone drugs because they're going to speed up the process. What we want to do is give nutrients to those osteoblasts to rebuild the bone. But not all supplements are created equal. And that's why we started the health store. We put together a product called Super Cal Plus. And it's a lot more than just calcium. And in fact, a lot of you may be taking antacids like Tums. How many people take antacids to build their bones? Anyone here? Okay, antacids are never going to work because you need stomach acid to absorb minerals. So I don't care how much calcium is in Tums, you're not going to absorb it because it's stopping the stomach acid that you need in your stomach to absorb it. So we have the Super Cal Plus. And you'll see we added betaine hydrochloride to this to make sure you have enough stomach acid to absorb the calcium, magnesium, and the trace minerals, copper and boron. And then we have vitamin K. We have vitamin D3 in there. We have everything you need to rebuild the bones, including the hydrochloric acid. So this is a huge advance over most of the other bone products. You know, a lot of people are on calcium carbonate. That's ground up rocks or seashells. Your body can't absorb it. And that's why a lot of women are getting heart attacks. They're predicting, uh, they're postulating that the reason so many women are getting heart attacks is they have a buildup of calcium in their arteries because they're taking these bone formulas that they can't absorb and so it just lines your arteries. How many people are on antacids like Protonix, Nexium, Prilosec? Anyone here? You're headed for osteoporosis. And we have an article on that spindle by the food table there. I didn't pass that out but you'll read about it about the antacids causing bone fractures because you get malnourished, you cannot absorb your nutrients without hydrochloric acid. Now, if you're on antacids, proton pump inhibitors, because you have acid reflux, it's not at your age that you have too much stomach acid, you probably have too little. It's that you have the acid in the wrong place because the stomach's in the wrong place. The stomach has pushed up, the top of it's getting squeezed by your diaphragm, that's opening up the flap that separates the esophagus from the stomach, and that allows the contents of your food to vomit back up, not only just the stomach acid, but also the food. And we have a maneuver that can correct that by pulling the stomach back down. So the doctors are treating the symptom. You don't have too much stomach acid, you just have it in the wrong place because the stomach's in the wrong place. Okay? So you have to have nutrients in the proper form, you have to have enough hydrochloric acid to absorb this uh, synergistic effect of all these nutrients, the magnesium, the calcium, and we have calcium hydroxyapatite, which is the easiest form of um, absorbable calcium, the most readily absorbed form. Then we got the vitamin D that you need, the vitamin K, the boron, we got all the essential ingredients for your body to have the raw materials to rebuild bones. So if you had a factory Let's, you had, you, let's say you had a steel mill like we used to have in Pittsburgh and you don't bring the iron ore or whatever else they use to make steel. You could have all the workers in that plant but they don't have the materials to make the product. You have the workers right inside your bones to rebuild the bones, you just need the nutrients and that's true of everything in your body. 
So malnutrition is causing a lot of problems in the United States. People are fat. I saw this, uh, this thing here about this uh, person here, pretty obese. And the reason people get fat like that very often is because they're eating devitalized food and so they're constantly hungry because they're not getting the nutrients they need. If you eat nutrient-dense food, then you're not going to eat as much because you'll be satisfied. Let's talk about that arthritis. There are two basic forms of arthritis. There's the inflammatory and the non-inflammatory. The inflammatory is very often called an autoimmune system problem. That suddenly your body is attacking itself. There is no such thing as an autoimmune disease. I don't care if it's asthma, uh, intestinal problems like Crohn's disease or colitis. There is no such thing. What's happening is your immune system is trying to get something out of your body that it sees as foreign. And I gave a talk the other day on food sensitivities and food allergies. In my experience, a lot of inflammation comes from food sensitivities. You're eating foods that your body cannot handle. My colleague, Dr. Perlmutter, who's a board-certified medical neurologist, has written a book called Grain Brain. He's talking about mental and emotional problems coming from eating grains, especially wheat. Dr. William Davis, MD, wrote a book called Wheat Belly, people getting fat from eating wheat when they're allergic to it. Dr. Marshall Mandel wrote a book like 30 some years ago called It's Not Your Fault, You're Fat. And he found that a lot of people are overweight just because they're eating foods that their body can't handle, food allergies. Now we have a method for correcting food allergies. You may not even know that you have food allergies, so we have a method of detecting it. It doesn't involve shots, shots, needles, or blood tests. And we also have a method of improving or correcting these food allergies. So if you do have rheumatoid arthritis, or scleroderma, or systemic lupus erythematosus, this is correctable through dietary changes and or our allergy treatments. Okay? Now the other form is called degenerative joint disease, where there's just wearing away the bones or the cartilage. And I talked about that earlier when I was talking about the cartilage problem I have. Now they used to say there's no blood supply to your cartilage. Now doctors realize there is a blood supply. But they knew, never use a less profitable procedure or product when there's a more profitable procedure or product involved. Okay? So they use hyaluronic acid shots and they charge $3,500. We have the HA Plus. I don't remember month supply, it's around $30, $40. The HA Plus has the ingredients that your body needs to rebuild the cartilage, just like I did. And I did it without the aid of this product because this product didn't exist when I injured my knee 30 some years ago. I had to use precursor products that were not as powerful as this. So this is the HA Plus, and I'll tell you what just happened yesterday. I'm pulling out of my garage, and this truck passes behind me, and then it stops. So I wonder why this guy's blocking me, and he yells out the window, Dr. Weiner. He said, you really helped me, and I'm looking at this man. I never saw this man before in my life. Now, I'm not the best on names, but I usually remember faces. I said, have I ever met you before? He says, no. I said, how did I help you? He said, I called you on the radio. I told you I had knee pain. And you told me to get on the HA Plus. He said, then knee pain's totally gone. Okay? How many people here have used HA Plus and gotten benefit? Anyone here? Okay. You have. Okay. Because maybe at some point, if we have time, maybe we'll have you come up and just tell your story for a minute. Well, we're not forcing you, but you know, if you want to volunteer. Okay, so the thing is you can take this HA Plus, and we have another product that is very useful. And we've given you an article on this. That's the green lip muscle. Okay, the green lip muscle. And the combination of these two is very, very powerful in rebuilding 
the joints and also getting rid of pain. Now, I didn't pass on. I didn't want to give you too much. We have products called X-Flame and Inflame, and they're natural anti-inflammatories. Now, the trouble is with the anti-inflammatories that many of you may have been exposed to are very dangerous. If you're on prednisone or cortisone, anyone here on prednisone or cortisone? No one. Wow. Now, you can't just go off prednisone or cortisone cold turkey. That can be dangerous. But it is used for asthma. It's used for headaches. It's used for intestinal problems. It's used for arthritis. It's used for all kinds of things. Uh, topically, on the skin, when you have a rash or eczema or something. And this is just suppressing your immune system. Once again, it's not figuring out why you have the problem. It's just suppressing the symptoms. We try to figure out why you have the problem. Now, the thing is, let's say you have a lot of pain. You're saying, okay, Dr. Weiner, I'll come to you and we'll, we'll correct the underlying cause, whether it's food allergies or whatever it happens to be. But you want immediate relief. So we have products that will help relieve the pain. They're not going to fix the problem. X-Flame is our premier product. However, if you're on blood thinners or anticoagulants like Coumadin, Pradaxa, Warfarin, Effian, uh, Plavix, we would recommend you not take that because it has a little bit of a blood thinning component to it. So then you use the Inflame. Okay? If you have any kind of, any, whether it's intestinal inflammation, lung inflammation, joint inflammation, you can use one of those two products depending upon whether or not you're on the blood thinners or anticoagulants. If you are on those drugs, then you need to use the Inflame. Okay, then you take the HA+. Plus. I'd say a starter dose would be at least three, preferably four to six. You can take the Green Lip Muscle three a day. If you want to build your bones, you get on the Super Cal Plus, I'd say at least three or four a day. Stay away from soda pop, decrease the animal consumption. And then keep in mind what I said earlier, is that a lot of pain and dysfunction of the musculoskeletal system comes from tight muscles. You know, one time I saw David Niven on Johnny Carson, and Johnny said, well, uh, are you working on any projects now? He says, yeah, I'm doing this movie where I play an old man. And then Johnny said, well, how do you play an old man? What's different? He says, well, you see this cup here? He said, uh, you know, a person that's younger might be able to just do this. He said, an old person, maybe they shake a little bit. It's going to take them a long time to get that here. He said, and then he stood up. He said, when they walk. He said, a normal person, you know, takes big strides. He said, an older person, they're taking little strides. You know why they're taking little strides? Their muscles are tight. In most cases, it's not a balance problem. It's their muscles are tight, and they can't uh, take as big a stride. We've had athletes here who we improve their marathon time by 10% just by loosening up their muscles. So every time they're taking a step, instead of let's say maybe it's two and a half or three feet, maybe it's another five, 10 inches, and you multiply that times 26 miles, we're talking cutting their time. So even someone who's in shape may have tight muscles. And also muscle weakness very often is that your muscles are overly contracted. And so we loosen up the excessive contraction and then you're stronger. We've had you know, guys that lift weights and suddenly they can lift 20, 30, 40 pounds more the next day because now they're recruiting more muscle fibers. They're you know, not prematurely contracted before they're trying to do the exercise. All right, so who would like to come up here and tell me their story, how they've been helped with either SuperCal Plus, HA Plus, uh, Omega 3D, um, Green Lip Muscle? Anyone here? Or, or I mean, I can just come over to you, I guess. Anyone want to volunteer to give a testimony? Okay, Wilma, why don't you come over here, honey? Okay, I came to Dr. Weiner. I had no motion left in my shoulder. They did x rays and. Uh, well, I didn't do x rays. We don't do x rays no. here. X rays the were done did privately. x rays and CT scan, and they said that they wanted to operate because I had no cartilage left. I came to Dr. Weiner. He prescribed the AJ Plus and did some exercises on me. Well, muscle therapy, yeah. Yeah, muscle therapy. Mm -hmm. And I had full motion back, no operation. Okay, let's show, show them which, which shoulder. Let's see, let's this see, one. let's see you moving it. Whoa! 
<laughs> Great. Thanks a lot. Anyone else want to share this? Because I'll tell you, you know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words. A testimonial two minutes from her is worth more than me giving hours of lectures because you might think I have an agenda. I have an ulterior motive. Um, anyone else want to share their stories here? You, you grew your hair back, right? Yeah, okay. Because I figured out you had undiagnosed underancothyroid. Um, I don't know, can we get that to where she just tells her little story? Maybe turn, turn and look at the camera, honey. Or stand up, whatever. I was taking thyroid medicine and I was losing my hair up here. And uh, I came to Dr. Weiner's and he gave me thyrosol and iodine plus and hair, skin, and nails. And my hair grew back. And I don't have to take chemical prescriptions. Well, well, no, this is thyroid supplements, you, you know, thyroid supplements, not medication. We don't call them medications. These are over-the-counter things. You don't need a prescription. You know, Americans are only 4% of the world's human population, yet as a nation we're consuming 75% of the world's drugs, and we're 72nd in health among nations. So the thing is, uh, people are over-prescribed. Uh, medications, properly prescribed medications, are the third leading cause of death in the United States. Uh, we're not telling you to get off medications. In some cases, that could be dangerous. But we're trying to explain the difference between giving her the nutrients like the iodine plus and the hair, skin, and nails so that her body can start manufacturing the hair again. And someone taking some drug. You know, there's a whole different category of treating symptoms versus getting to the underlying cause. Okay, we're going to open up to questions now. We have a few minutes for questions before the next speaker. Uh, any questions? doesn't have to be on what I talked about. Yeah. Is it possible that a combination of vitamins and or minerals could affect the nervous system? Uh, well, he's asking vitamins and minerals to help the nervous system. I'll tell you, we came out with a product recently called Neuropathies for people that have neuropathy, where they have uh, abnormal sensations in the nerves or numbness or tingling. And so, uh, yes, uh, vitamins and minerals can really help the function of the nervous system. We also find a lot of people, they don't have the electrolytes for the conductivity of the electricity through the nerves and they need minerals. So yes, now are you talking adversely or, or positively? Adversely. In other words, is, is it possible that well, anything, some vitamins no. and minerals could mm -hmm. affect the nervous system in a negative Yeah, way. well that, that's true because some people may be allergic. Some people are allergic to certain uh, nutrients. So that creates a real problem because maybe they need those nutrients but their body's not able to handle it. Uh, you know, and I had a woman that came in here and she had an iron deficiency and the doctor put her in iron pills and it didn't work. And so I figured out she had a wheat allergy and once we correct the wheat allergy her iron and calcium levels went to normal. Uh, on the other hand I had someone else that came in here who had iron deficiency and the iron pills that the other doctor put them on uh, made them sick. And I found they had an iron allergy. A lot of people have an iodine allergy. People can be allergic to nutritional uh, ingredients that they need, you know, vital nutrients. And so then we have the treatments to correct that. And that's why when we recommend things to people, we generally test them individually to make sure what we're giving them is something their body wants. So, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes you may be taking nutrients that are adversely affecting you. Now, of course, not all supplements are created equal. So if you're buying something in a, a chain discount store or a drug store or grocery store, or even some health stores, you may be getting poor quality supplements that have undesirable ingredients in there, colorings, flavorings, additives, et cetera, that may be affecting you. It may not be the nutrient itself. So there's a lot of different possibilities here. Uh, other questions? Yes. Okay, she's talking about uh, bone loss related to hormonal levels in postmenopausal women. And yes, we have the femestroplex that can help simulate estrogen projection. Uh, even if someone's had a complete hysterectomy, they still have other organs making estrogen because men make estrogen. In fact, the average man age 40 has as much estrogen as a woman who's age 40. And I talked about this the other day about xenoestrogens like parabens and plastics and pesticides and 
a lot of different things that actually convert to estrogen in the body. But if someone's estrogen deficient, we do have nutrients that can bolster that. We also have the Progest cream for progesterone. Uh, some women are low in testosterone. Yes, women do make testosterone, and we have various products here to boost testosterone production. And that's where we have to test you to see what it is. Now, unfortunately, uh, the, the uh, female hormone replacement is very dangerous and cause cancer and heart attacks and various other problems. So, uh, you know, the natural approach would be better. And, you know, when we look at women uh, in Japan, for example, they don't have osteoporosis, the postmenopausal women because they have a different diet than we do. So diet has a lot to do with it, eating the animals and the dairy products. They're very high in phosphorus that actually cause minerals to leach out of the bones. But yes, there are supplements like Femestroplex, uh, Progest, uh, Testogain, various things to bolster hormone production. Now, what if someone has too much estrogen? Let's say they have breast cancer that's related to too much estrogen. Uh, then we do have the EstroCleanse to get rid of the excess estrogen, which is something I take because I was tested I was too high in estrogen. Other questions? Yes? Um, I've been diagnosed with burning mouth syndrome. Burning mouth syndrome. Did you call here the other day where you went? Someone told me about that and I said, well, we need to... Oh, okay. Well, we, okay. well, we need to figure out... Uh, I love the creativity of the medical doctors. Burning mouth syndrome. I think she just has a burning mouth, you know what I mean? <laughs> chronic fatigue syndrome. Yes. You know, now the thing is I've spoken to chronic fatigue groups and the people there have similar symptoms but then they have them for completely different reasons. Maybe one person has an underactive thyroid, maybe the next person has food allergy, maybe the next person has low blood sugar, maybe the next person has uh, iron deficiency, and the next person has parasites that's eating up all their food. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you can be tired. There's a lot of reasons you can have a burning mouth. Now, the trouble is, is they're going to recommend dangerous things like probably steroid uh, mouthwashes or something like that. We have to figure out what is causing it. It could be something as simple as a B vitamin deficiency. It may be food allergies. We have to figure out what's causing your problem. I had a woman that came in here, and she had a severe cough. She went to the medical doctors. Medical doctor says, well, you're in your 80s. Uh, you probably have a heart condition. Put her on all kinds of medication, made her sick. She stopped. And she said, well, I, I don't really think it's a heart problem because I can run up the hill after the bus. I can run up the stairs. I live in a three-story house. Uh, I never get out of breath, she said. And a funny thing, she says, it happens when I'm in bed, but if I fall asleep on the sofa when I'm watching television, it doesn't happen. I said, then it has something to do with your bed. What kind of detergent do you use? Well, she was using commercial detergent fabric softener. And she also had an arm and shoulder problem, kind of like Wilma. And I, I wanted to fit her in with a muscle therapist, but we didn't have room till the afternoon. And I said, well, you know, do you want to stick around? She said, no, I'll go home and have lunch. I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get this Biopack liquid detergent and wash your pillowcases and sheets in it. And she did that, and then she took a nap. And when she came back for a muscle therapy second session, she said, you know what? I'm not coughing anymore. It was the outgassing of the chemicals from her commercial detergents and fabric softeners causing the problem. So we have to figure out what it is. A lot of people have dry eyes, itchy skin, and it's from the detergents. Maybe your mouth, maybe your mouth breather, and maybe it's the detergents. I don't know. There's a hundred different reasons. We look for the causes. We have to figure out why you have this burning mouth. Unfortunately, what happens in medicine is what we call the blanket diagnosis. They need to have a diagnosis in order to get insurance reimbursement. And so they lump everyone together. Just like I said, rheumatoid arthritis could be food allergies, but if we put 20 people in a room with rheumatoid arthritis, maybe each one has the symptoms of inflamed joints for a completely different reason. Even though most of them are probably food allergies, it might be different foods for different people. So it's very individualized. We can't lump them all together, but the treatment's all the same. Just like if you have high blood pressure, they put you on an ACE inhibitor or a beta blocker or a diuretic, and they don't try to figure out maybe a misaligned vertebrae. I had a patient that came in here was sent in by a relative of mine who's a cardiologist. He tried all kinds of different medications, couldn't lower her blood pressure. I adjusted her neck and that normalized it. She had misaligned vertebrae. The next person maybe is consuming uh, too much caffeine. Maybe the next person has food allergies. On and on it goes. There's a lot of different reasons for the same symptom. 
So we have to individualize the care plan, figuring out what is causing your problem. So you need to come in and we'll try to figure out why you have this burning mouth. It could be any number of things. Maybe your toothpaste. A lot of commercial toothpaste are bad. Yeah, well, we have, we, have to go, we have to go through and see what you've done. You know, food allergies, B vitamin deficiencies, there's a lot of reasons, yeast infections. Other questions? Good question. Yes, ma'am. What is the treatment that you would have for stomach ulcers? Stomach ulcers? Stomach ulcers were proven to be caused by a bacteria, H. pylori, over 20 years ago. In fact, the two doctors won a Nobel Prize for proving that. Unfortunately, what do doctors do? They give you an antacid, and then the uh, bacteria flourishes. You're on an antacid, you have bacteria growing in your intestinal tract now. I would say one of the simplest things is just to get our aloe. Aloe usually heals it. Uh, Raw cabbage juice, you could grind up uh, cabbage. If you don't have a juicer, and we sell them $100 off list price, you can just blend it in a blender, grate cabbage and mix some water in it and strain it and drink it. We used to have a product, I don't know if we still do, called Alsinex there. So there's a number of things that can help heal stomach ulcers. Uh, let me see, yes, you didn't ask. I was wondering uh, how many supplements would be needed to uh, help me strengthen uh Rebuild the well, rebuild the cartilage, I would do the green lip muscle and the HA plus, and at least three to six a day. You, you have the, you got, you got, you got right in your hand. The one's the HA plus, the other one's the green lip muscle. You, you have the flyers on it, sir. The HA plus and the green lip muscle. Yeah. What is green lip muscle? I've never heard of Well, well, it's a muscle that has a green lip around it. A mussel, it's a, sh a shellfish, you know, M-U-S-S-E-L, like oysters. It's an it's a animal, and they found an extract of this thing actually helps with arthritis. Did you have a question, sir? You did, yeah. Uh, okay, well, they're going to say Barrett's esophagitis, and you're getting, uh, uh, you know, irritation of the esophagus. Uh, you can always take baking soda before bedtime. Most people don't have the acid reflux during the day when they're vertical, when they're seated or standing. It happens when they're lying down horizontal. So then I would take a teaspoon of baking soda and a small glass of water before bedtime but, and as a stopgap. The aloe also helps to heal these ulcers, like I mentioned over here, whether it's in the esophagus or the stomach or duodenum. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there is more than one way to skin a cat. A lot of times people have acid reflux because certain foods overstimulate it. So, you know, some people say tomatoes, spicy foods. We have to figure out why you have it. And sometimes it takes more than one treatment to correct the hiatal hernia, or you may have to have it done uh, occasionally, and we teach you how to do it yourself. I've had people that uh, we showed them how to do it, and then they don't have to come to me for it, they can do it themselves. But if you take the antacids, you're going to end up with uh, pathogenic bacteria and viruses growing in your intestinal tract because that's the first line of defense your body has, and also you won't be able to digest your food. Okay, well, I'm going to stop so the next, uh, you have a couple minutes before the next speaker. Uh, if you want to talk to me, I'll be hanging around here. And, uh, but I, I'll go towards a store so we don't interfere with the next person. Keep in mind we have the free food on the other side and the free literature, including the information on the antacids. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you.